Some people would say choosing between a new MacBook Air or MacBook Pro is easy, and that was true last year when the Air cost $300 less, but this year it seems like it's much more difficult. Not only did Apple raise the price by $200 for the M2 MacBook Air, since they're still selling the M1, but if you upgrade the 8-core graphics to the same 10-core that comes with the Pro, you're at the same $1,300 price tag. And being that the Pro has a cooling fan to get the maximum performance from the new chip, that's a logical choice, right? No, not so fast. In this video, I will explain every single difference and give you my honest opinion on which one you should buy depending on your use case. Let's start out with the design. Gone is the iconic wedge shape with the new M2 Air looking similar to the rest of the MacBooks while the Pro looks the same as it did when it launched in 2016 and it still comes in those two classic colors compared to four colors now, two of which are new and I personally really like the new Midnight on the Air. Apple says that the redesigned Air is 20% smaller by volume, which I'm sure is true, but the footprint has actually gotten larger. It is actually slightly larger than the MacBook Pro now, but thinner at 0.44 inches compared to 0.61. But because of the Pro's slimming tapered sides, you might not be able to tell, but you will notice the lighter 2.7 pounds of the Air compared to the three pounds. Now, honestly, I do not think that any of this should sway your decision. What matters more are the displays. The MacBook Air has always had a worse screen in multiple ways, but not anymore. It is now larger at 13.6 inches thanks to the notch screen design, which has thinner bezels and adds vertical space. This makes the 13-inch MacBook Pro screen look outdated with its thick bezels, but that's not the worst part, which is that it still supports 16.7 million colors compared to a billion on the Air, which Apple conveniently doesn't list in their side-by-side -side comparison tool, but it only shows up if you look at the individual detailed technical specs. So if you want the better screen for the first time ever, it's in the air. Now inside of the Air's notch, we have Apple's 1080p laptop webcam, which lets in twice the light and is twice the resolution of the Pro's six-year-old 720p webcam, which now looks a lot worse. Honestly, it is now unjustifiable to be releasing a brand new MacBook with this webcam. Now the Air no longer has the speaker holes on the sides of the keyboard like the Pro has, but Apple has upgraded it to a four speaker system that they say is much better. The crazy thing is that the previous Air already had better speakers than the MacBook Pro. Don't believe me? Take a listen for yourself. Yeah, not only was it louder, but it also had deeper bass as well, and now it'll be even better while the Pro stays the same. As far as microphones, the Pro is staying the same as before while the Air has been updated to now include beam forwarding tech. Now last year, the Air's mics sounded more boomy, but were quite a bit louder. Go ahead and take a listen. This is the microphone quality of the M1 MacBook Air's microphones, and the M2 MacBook Air has upgraded microphones. And this is the quality of the M1 MacBook Pro's microphones, and they're staying the same with the M2 MacBook Pro. So once again, I'm expecting the Air's mics to be improved over the Pro. Now one area the Pro had an advantage was battery life because the battery was bigger. This year, the Air's battery got just over 5% larger, but Apple has kept the ratings exactly the same, so you'll still get two extra hours of rated battery life increase for simple tasks. Now I know some people make a big deal about this, but in my experience, once the battery life is so amazing, you don't really notice going from 18 hours of video playback to 20. With that said, the MacBook Air now has fast charging if you get the 67 watt charger, so it will charge to 50% in 30 minutes instead of taking over an hour to get there using the Pro with the same exact charger. That is thanks to MagSafe, which you do not get with the Pro. So even the same charger, the Pro just doesn't support that fast charging option. Now MagSafe is not only super convenient because it magnetically attaches and disconnects to prevent damage to your Mac, but it also frees up having to use one of those USB Type-C ports to charge. 
So technically, both do have the same two Thunderbolt ports, but you'll always have access to them with the Air. Now, if you're somebody that loves the touch bar, the M2 MacBook Pro is the only Mac left that still has it. Most people are happier with more physical keys than the redesigned Touch ID, but if you know that you like it, then keep that in mind. This is where we get into performance, because as most of you guys know, the MacBook Air is completely fanless, which really scares some people. With the M1 MacBooks, we thought that the Pro was the one for anybody that cared about performance because of our previous experience with Intel MacBooks, and we did find that the MacBook Air could definitely throttled the performance for long tough tasks and benchmarks, but when it came down to real world use, we never really had a problem. I've owned an M1 Air and Pro since they launched, and I consistently choose to use the Air, even for 4K video editing and high resolution raw photo editing, and that's even with me having the base 7 core graphics M1 Air compared to 8 cores in the Pro. Sound crazy? Well, I did some extreme tests to see just how much slower the Air was. I converted 542 megapixel edited raw files to JPEG, and the Air was just a few minutes behind. And then I exported 8K red raw video which maxes out the CPU and graphics to 100% the whole time, and the difference was just a few minutes, which isn't really noticeable in the real world when it takes around 30 minutes anyway, unless you're sitting there side by side with a stopwatch, which I was doing. And once we did our thermal mod on the MacBook Air, it actually outperformed the Pro in some tasks because the heat gets spread right away, where Apple holds the Pro back because it waits to spin the fan up until it gets super hot and already starts throttling. Now, of course, the M2 chip is more powerful, but it's not using much more power than the M1, and for most tasks, you don't max out the chips for extended lengths, especially with the super powerful media engines included with the M2 chip. Now, if you know that you'll be rendering for a super long time and you want the best performance, the Pro will definitely be better. But the question is, by how much? And will it taking 27 minutes instead of 30? Will that be enough for you to deal with all the old parts and the old design? Personally, I think that if you know that you'll be pushing it crazy hard consistently, and you'll also be upgrading your SSD and your RAM from that base 8 gig with 256, which isn't enough for hardcore users, and you start pushing up those specs, the price gets really close to the price of the 14-inch MacBook Pro, which you can buy at a discount now, which is a much nicer and more powerful MacBook. I think that for 99% of the viewers watching this video and trying to decide on which one of these two to buy, I would really push you to get the M2 MacBook Air. It is a brand new machine, whereas the Pro will be the next MacBook to be replaced. And other than having the new M2 chip, it is a really outdated laptop. And if you're scared of throttling, get the base M2 chip with 8 graphics cores at that base price. It won't use any more wattage than the M1, and it will likely have a better heat spreader than the old Air design that wasn't designed for Apple's chips initially. I think that most people will be very happy with it. If you have any more questions on configurations, check out my M2 MacBook Air Buyer's Guide right over there. Click above to subscribe to help us reach our goal of 1 million subscribers and to see more videos like this one. This has been Max, and I will see you in the next video.